Why do Toys for Tots and Hasbro trust Duracell to power their donated toys? Duralock Power Preserve. It locks in power for up to 10 years in storage. Guaranteed. Duracell with Duralock. Trusted everywhere. There's a fine old technique in law enforcement. Got two defendants? Get one to take a deal and testify against the other. Looked like that was about to work in the case of the West Wendover murder of Mickey Costanzo. Tony Fratto appeared all set to tell the world that her fiance, Cody Patton, after abusing her for years, forced her to witness and even, in a minor way, assist in the killing. Apparently, like everybody else, she didn't know why Cody did it. Only that she, Tony, feared he'd kill her too if she didn't go along. But of course, why was the question on the lips of just about every living, breathing soul within sight of Wendover Will here? The idea that Cody would brutally murder his own good childhood friend just didn't make any sense. Any more than did the idea that Tony would go to such trouble to visit Cody in jail and whisper sweet nothings to him on the phone and send him love notes if in fact she was deathly afraid of him as she claimed. No, people around here had pretty much given up on the idea of getting any kind of an answer. When suddenly, out of the blue, a little gift appeared. Tony, it turned out, had been keeping a diary. Before she confessed, Tony gave it to Cody's parents, who turned everything over to defense investigator Bill Savage. In my opinion, there was some valuable information in there with regard to Tony's personality, her feelings. In this little book, Tony poured out her fears, her hopes, her deep insecurities, and what Cody's attorney thought was just perhaps a motive for murder. This, for example, she worried that Cody will leave me for someone else, cheat on me, that Cody and I won't last forever, we won't get married. In here, she wrote of her own terror, that her relationship with Cody wouldn't work out. And if so, that there was no point in living. I'm very angry today. So angry that I'm trying to overdose. After I got off the phone with Cody, I went and took four aspirins. In my opinion, a very troubled young lady. A troubled young lady who, in many ways, did not feel worthy, I gather. That's correct. And who loved this guy, but at the same time, was terrified of losing him. Yes. Afraid of losing him to the girl he had grown up with, the attractive and popular Mickey Costanzo. We might as well break up so he can get back together with her. He will be happier and can see her a lot, a lot more than he will ever see me. They are perfect for each other. Tony was jealous of, of Mickey, and if she were out of the picture, then Cody and Tony would be together. She was everything Tony wasn't. Yes, absolutely. They would be so happy together if I didn't steal him away. I know in my heart he really doesn't love me. The diaries disclosed a, a real animosity that Tony had for Michaela. Right. No one's ever shown me any reason that Cody had to hurt Michaela. None. But Tony? Tony had reasons. Was it possible she was the one who wanted Mickey dead? That her big, strong boyfriend was just doing what she wanted? Mickey's sisters remembered. Tony used to get so upset if Michaela was seen talking to Cody. And she would just yell and holler and say s horrible things to Michaela. You know, don't talk to him and call her every name imaginable. An intensely jealous young woman, said DJ. He couldn't be around girls, especially my sister, but he couldn't go do certain things, she couldn't go do certain things, and if one did it that the other didn't like, it was World War III. And Cody was, said Christina, on a very tight leash. I must have been doing laundry or something, and here Tony came walking, and he was like, gotta go, and I was like, you can't even talk to me? He was like, no, I gotta go. I can't be seen, show you mad. Who was the driving force in that relationship? She was. But having heard Tony's sworn statement, Cody's lawyer knew that his client's story about Mickey dying after some sort of accident 
now sounded like the cover-up for a cold-blooded murder. And therefore, that Tony's testimony could send Cody, who was still facing trial, to death row. Part of Tony Fratto's statement in which she said that at some point in time in this killing, Michaela sat up in the grave and said to Cody, am I still here? Can I go home? Devastating. Yeah. Which is why, just weeks before the trial, Cody decided to plead guilty to first-degree murder. That was the safest way to go. That was the way that would present at least a possibility that Cody would see daylight again, and it would take the death penalty off the table. At Cody's sentencing in front of a packed courtroom, he made his case for eventual parole, pleading with the judge for mercy and begging Mickey's family for forgiveness. He says, I'm sorry for the unimaginable pain this has caused you. And then for the first time, Cody spoke publicly about his fiance and apparent partner in the murder, the woman he'd protected in his confession, never revealing she was with him at the crime scene. Listen to what he said now. To the court, I just want to state that my co-defendant Tony Crowder is not all to blame. Did you hear that? Tony was not all to blame. Was Cody implying that she played a role in at least some or even most of those horrific stab wounds to Mickey's pretty face? There's no reason, there's no why. There's no justification for it. It's just, again, sorry it's not enough, but I, I I apologize for everything. Moments later, his sentence. A chance at parole after maybe 25 years? I sent you to a term of life in the United Department of Corrections. There shall be no possibility of parole. It was justice, said Mickey's family. But an odd feeling lingered. You have to sit there and go, Oh my God, this person that I knew so well will never, ever have a chance of anything. You're conflicted. I see the good in him. I see what he did. I want him to be punished for what he did, but I see that good side of him. Both Cody and the prison where he'll spend his life turned down our request for an interview. But Tony Fratto, different story. Tony had a lot to say about that dark night in the Nevada desert and just what really happened to her romantic rival, Mickey Costanzo.